Hello everyone. My name is Jeanette Camping from Henry Stewart Events and I'd like to welcome you to our latest webinar, DAM Workspace Acceleration, sponsored by CI Hub. We're delighted to see such a global audience of DAM professionals registered today. We'll be having Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please send through your questions on your GoToWebinar panel. And we are recording today's session and we will be sending the link to you all later. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Andreas Michalski and Gert Glazer. And now Andreas is going to start. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andreas. I'm one of the three founders of CI Hub. I will tell you a little bit more about CI Hub at the end of that session. And as this is not a commercial, let us focus on the three essential things that will make your life a lot easier when dealing with cloud storages and them systems within your creative work. In the last year, so many things have changed. There are so many new services available you can work with. When I started with Adobe InDesign, and this was version 1.2, all of my data was on my local drive and maybe in my novel network. When my customers wanted to share their data with me, they put it on a floppy disk drive and send it via the postal services. Today, you, your customers work with SharePoint, with Dropbox, with Google Drive, with Brand Folder, with Zilong, Primo, just to name a couple of them. That's amazing. It makes storing, sharing, and backing up so easy. It allows us to collaborate on a whole new level than ever before. But now you have to deal with all of these systems. Each system has a different way on logging in. You have a different login. You have a different URL. Uh, each system has its specialties. It has its own navigation or its own interface. That makes it different to find and to navigate all of your assets. But also it delivers cool features like versioning, downloading in different renditions that you can use uh, within your work, within the perfect file size for each different situation. So in this session, we will show you on how to use all of these cool features to your benefit and how to avoid some of the pitfalls that comes with all of these systems. In this session is planned as a very hands-on session and it will give you a lot of information you can take away. So let's start. If you want to repeat what we present in this session here, and if you want to use the benefits, you should have your Adobe Creative Cloud installed, and you should have the CI App Connector ready on your machine. It's really easy to install. You just go to the Adobe Exchange Store, click on Install, and it will be part of your Creative Cloud applications in a minute. If you need more instructions, at the end of that session, we give you all the details. For today, we have prepared a very common use case. We want to sell a travel destination for September. So the team has to create a brochure, artwork, a video, and a social media post. And they all have to work together to achieve that. We all are in different locations and my team consists of a designer, a layouter, a graphic artist, and a social media team. Also, we have to check with our legal team if we can use all of the assets based on the permissions and based on the rights we've purchased. Our customers are using a Dropbox for all of his assets, a Pixelbox DAM solution to store the travel agent's metadata and images, and we're using Getty Images as our stock archive if you want to purchase images. I think you're all aware of this constellation. This is very common in an agency if you work with customers. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce Gert. He will lead us through the session and he will show us on how to work with all of the Adobe tools in a really perfect way. Hello, Gert. It's nice to have you here. Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me. 
It's a pleasure to be part of this session. And hi to all of you. Gert, it's really a pleasure to have you here. Let us start with the session and dive right into the campaign. Yes, sure. Let me switch over to my computer and start editing a brochure with the Adobe applications and the CI Hub panel. I'm in InDesign. The CI Hub connector is open and I'm creating a Dropbox connection by clicking the plus button. My preferred browser comes up and after logging in, I get a status message. Among other connections I've already set up, I'm now switching to Dropbox. As of now, I'm able to search and browse my Dropbox content. I can browse by clicking the folder icon or I can use the breadcrumb to navigate. It is really easy to switch between source systems. Google Drive, Getty Images or DAM systems are connected with just one click. Let's open our InDesign document, which is stored in Dropbox. They look pretty much the same but we can browse through the pages in the preview image. And yes, we've seen it a thousand times. The links are missing, but no worries. We will check this later on with the CI Hub links panel. We need to create the cover page and fill in some content. Let's start with the cover image. Select the asset and drag and drop it into the target frame. And if you set up your target frames with fill proportionally, you'll get a good result. I'm going to add the title and to do so, I'm using an InDesign snippet. And the reverse case, if you want to upload a snippet into your Dropbox, just click the Add a File button whilst your grouped elements are selected. That's it. Now I'm going to place the early bird element and this is an Illustrator file. Let's go to page four. I'm placing an image as I did with the cover. And if you want to, you can use low res images during the layout process. The replacement with high res can be done automatically, but I will cover this later on. Here's the placeholder for the author. And in my case, all employee images are stored separately in a DAM system. So let's switch to the Pixelbox DAM, use the full text search, and here we go. And that's where metadata is really useful. I can drag and drop metadata content from the panel into a text frame. And this is really a huge time saver. So some assets need to be adjusted. So let's switch to Adobe Illustrator. And as you can see, the same interface as we have in InDesign. So it's easy to handle. I open this Illustrator file, do some changes. And if I use the panel consistently, I avoid overriding the original file. I'm going to create a version and that's how it works. If necessary, I can always switch back to former versions. Now let's go back to InDesign. The relinking can be done automatically, but I will cover this later on. For now, let's update the placed file manually. And therefore, I'm using the replace feature. Let's switch to page four again. The image of the author should have a more friendly background. And you may remember this file is stored in the DAM. So let's switch to Adobe Photoshop. Select the DAM connection, do a full text search and open the image. Change the background. And as we did before in Illustrator, let's create a version of this image. And you can leave a comment, which will be stored in the metadata. So back to InDesign and replace the image. 
sometimes you don't need to have a version. You want to have a new asset and maybe you want to move it from a damn system into your Dropbox or whatever system without leaving your Adobe application. So this is how it works. Choose a target system, create a folder if you want to, tap the add file button and change the file name, jump into the created folder and upload the new image from Photoshop directly into your selected target system. And the same in Illustrator. But in this case, the source system and the target system is Dropbox. So we have to ensure that the file names are different. And the CI Hub connector reminds you to do so. Type a new file name and that's it. And to replace the file in the cover, I'm using again the replace feature. Another topic is how to deal with images that are stored on your computer. It's very handy. Place the image in InDesign. Choose a target system. And upload the new file. That's it. Let's check the links and the rights of the used assets. The first step is to save the InDesign doc as a new version into the cloud system. Second step, click the links button, this little gear wheel over here. And you will see a list of assets that are linked to the document. And if I hover the red computer icon, I can see that some files are not locally available, but the green ones are. So let's check the status of the assets by clicking this little button here. The panel is now searching the Dropbox or any other connected system to see if these files are available. The warning icon means there is a new version available. By clicking the little arrow, I can unfold the details section of the asset. This link leads me to the page where the asset is placed. And now I can decide if I'm okay with the new version or not. If yes, just relink it. When the relink is done, you can see the Dropbox logo in front of the file name. This is the source system of this file. But let's do a bulk operation. All files are relinked and we are ready to produce a print file. The relink feature can also be used to replace all linked images with the latest version. And in addition, the relink feature can also be used to replace low res with high res files. This is very helpful when you are dealing with large image files. Now we should check the image rights for legal reasons. I set the duration of the campaign, select the territory and select the use of the material. That's all. You can see the handshake icons. Some of them are green. That means all good. Some of them are yellow. That means this asset is partially available. Click the arrow and you will see that this image is available in Germany, but not in the US. The green ones are available for both territories and during the campaign. The gray icon means this asset is not registered. So it is up to you if you want to register or not. If you want to, that's how it goes. Select the asset and click the register button. That's all. This button triggers a workflow in the DRM system 
and the preview file is uploaded for visual approval. Currently, the rights are missing, but as we all know, the legal guys are doing their job right in time, at least today. Let's check again. Okay, we're done. Now we're good to go. Now let's produce our print file and share it with our print service provider without leaving our Adobe application. I create a folder, which will be the shared folder for our print service provider. I add a new file with a PDF, with selected job options, including color transformation, bleed and marks, etc. I can choose if I want to create a PDF or an InDesign package. I would like to hand over the high-risk PDF. And as you can see, everything is in CNYK. And yes, I prefer to store the company's job options and ICC profiles into my source system so that everyone has access to it. This ensures a consistent output of every project. So that's it from my side. Back to you, Andy. Gert, this was so cool. So you and your designers in that session have worked completely together without ever leaving your Adobe application. This is what I call efficient. So to wrap it up, all of your assets are stored in the cloud and the DUM, so it's easy to share the assets across the teams and across the locations. The only thing you need to do for that is save your assets and files into your connection and with that you save it into your dropbox or any other system nothing needs to be on your local drive because then you can use all of the amazing benefits like versioning of assets like renditions on demand and so many other features url linking sharing options or the backup which comes with all of your cloud storages. Sharing across your application and saving time and stay consistent is the main key for working together in such a complex project. So we are finished with the brochure. Gerd, what is next? Thanks, Andy. Let's have a look at Illustrator and After Effects. I would like to create a post for the hotel number seven, which is advertised in my brochure. And therefore, I have prepared a template in Illustrator with separate layers like background, call to action, placeholder for video, etc. I will use the CI Hub connector to upload my template into Dropbox or any other target system. The After Effects guys are ready to go. They can use the CI Hub connector in the same way. Drag the artboard to the stage, import the Illustrator file as a comp, and start working with layers. Then pick a video from Dropbox and place it into After Effects as footage. Convert the video placeholder into a mask and do some magic for the animation. Now creating templates with the CI Hub panel is really cool. If you want to use the template for the web, just use a rendition which fits your needs. If it's for print, use the original. And it's not necessary to store different files with separate resolutions. And if I use Illustrator as a template creator, I'm so much more flexible. I think this is a way to create multiple posts for a number of products and you can always stay compliant with your CI guidelines. So my job is done. Uh, upload the After Effects project into Dropbox and Let's upload a version without background so that the Premiere guys can add some stuff. So again, nothing needs to be stored locally. Everything is online, everyone has access, and everyone is on the same page. 
Now let's open Premiere Pro and the CI connector. I'm going to drag the After Effects project we've just stored in Dropbox onto the stage, select the composition and create a new sequence. So let's get rid of the audio track. I think we don't need it now. So everything's fine, transparency is working, yeah. So now I would like to have a video in the background. So I go to my panel, switch to Getty Images, and do a full text search for videos. I'll type a search term, hit the return button, and here we go. Let's enlarge the panel a bit. So I select the video and check the option for low resolution. That's okay to get an approval and it fits to my 1080 anyway. So just drag it into the sequence and put everything in position. Just to have the background aligned to the comp. And let's cut it down a bit. And I think that's it. So we're fine and I would like to add some sound. So I switch to my Dropbox, go to my footage folder and drag an audio file onto the stage. Done. And here we go. Cut it down and do a full render. Yep, I think that's fine for me. So at the end of the session, I would like to have a still uh, to use it at the end of my video. So I'm going to take a screenshot, switch over, yep, take a screenshot. And as we all know, the screenshot is locally stored, but that's not what I want. So I'll come to it later. Let's bring it into position and that's it. So I go to my CI Hub connector, open the panel, and I can see that this file is locally stored, but I don't want that. So let's relink it and upload it directly into my Dropbox. So images, documents, graphics, video and audio files are valuable assets, but they are only really valuable when they are accessible to everyone no matter where, no matter when. So that's it from my side. Back to you, Andy. Okay, let us wrap up what we've just seen. Adobe After Effects is a really cool tool. And the way you presented that, Gert, I think there's a lot to take away from it. So working with layers in AI files and automatically updating them, that's really nice. I've never seen it before. So the only thing what is missing for our campaign is now we need to create different sized ads and individual banners for the destination's website. This is normally really the boring stuff. So wouldn't it be cool if we have a database publishing functionality on hand, which would automate all of that and would make sure that we're in line and that the quality assurance is just built in. Gert, I think that's something what you can show us now, right? Yes, Andy, you're right. Let's have a look at the CI Hub connector again. My goal is to have a number of products available. So let's select our products and tap CSV export. And when I say products, I mean images, text, pricing, etc. 
And we all know how boring it is to bring CSV files and images together. With a CI Hub connector is just one click and the records are created. I have prepared a print app with different formats by using the alternate layout. One is in square and another one is in portrait. And there's a little bit of grab style included. So the first step is to connect the CSV export we have just created. Here we go. And render three products into the layer. Okay, let's have a preview and use the data merge product number one to three. We're fine. Click on OK and the ad is produced. Fine. And the same goes for the portrait format. There is no additional effort. Open it from the panel, create a preview and render three objects. So now let's select product number four, six and eight and preview again. Great. So print ads are ready for production. Now we need some banners for the web. And therefore I have an Illustrator template with different formats created with artboards. And this Illustrator file is linked to my InDesign doc via the CI Hub connector. With the same CSV export, I'm able to produce multiple banners with just one click. Or create multiple banners for each product. That depends on your settings in Data Merge. So let's produce a PDF file and store it directly into Dropbox for review. And the cool thing is, if there are any changes regarding images or text, just click the CSV export button and render again. There are really no limits to what you can do with this feature. And all this is done with Adobe standard products in combination with the CI Hub connector. So that's it from my side. So back to you, Andy. That's again, really cool stuff. That means the database publishing option is just built into the CI Hub connector. You do not have to do anything in addition. It's just there. So I think we have finished our project. We have created an ad. We have changed the artwork. We created an animation banner with After Effects, and we worked on a project within Premiere Pro. We have stored all of our assets in the Dropbox. We used asset from the Pixelbox. We purchased images from Getty, and we checked if we are compliant with the rights to the federal service. And we have never left the Adobe Creative Cloud application to do so. This is the biggest time saver and a huge improvement to the whole process and to the way we work together as a team. With this way of working, we got a lot more productive and this helps us as a team to work together and be more productive for our customers. This is great. What a ride, isn't it? I think in that session, Gert has presented really amazing stuff. And remember, we never switched the horse. We never left an Adobe application. Everything what we presented to you is based on the CI Hub connector. I think we could show you on how easy it will be to work in different cloud storages across locations within your customers and within your team. The last 20 years, it was always a hassle to work with these different storage systems and the data spread around. We believe with the CI Hub connector, it will be easy as never before. And yes, we love to promote the CI Hub connector. I promised you this is not a promotion, but at the end, we want you to understand the capabilities of our connector. We got so much positive feedback from all of you. We've listened and everything we could, we put into the product to make it better for you. So our focus will be listening and continuing improving the product. If you want to take away as much as you can, download the CI app connector, install it into your Adobe product, 
or even your Microsoft product and make your working much easier and sharing the data with your customers. Hi, my name is Emerson. So, perfect. Um, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little ride through that uh, use case and uh, you could take, take away something on that. Um, as you all know, um, we're just coming back from Max. Um, here's just a short wrap up again. Uh, uh, and uh, it's not just the Adobe product where you can use our connector. It's also in addition, the Microsoft product and we're really happy we will release um, the Google product, or we have released the Google product. They will appear in the store, we do believe, within that week. So, and then you can also use it within within the Google environment, which is pretty cool, actually, to access your STEM system from your Google Sheets uh, and use the assets in there. So, quite nice. Um, to, to recap that, um, our goal is really to deliver one plugin that really helps your, you and your organization, uh, not just the creative teams and the category manager, it also should give access to all of the assets to the product management, the sales team, to external partners. We see use cases out there um, where it is uh, really making accessing your central brand repository of pre-approved assets a lot easier than it was before. So this is this is always our goal to do. Um, yeah, we say move your dam to the next level. Yeah, get more out of your investment and um, yeah, uh, some some news here. Um, uh, from the uh, Adobe Max, we would love if you if you like it, if you have tested it, leave a review, give us feedback on on what you think is great. That would be that would be amazing, to be honest. Um, we are on Google Workspace. I've just mentioned that, and um, we deliver more and more integrations. Um, we just added Sentry, uh, Look at me, Dom, Mardia, Keepak, OMN, uh, and what is really cool we added the functionality of the Gelato print environment. So um, beginning of November, you will have the capability of print your ready PDFs through the Gelato system globally, wherever you want. Um, and that's just a click away. So the platform of the CI connector is growing and we're really proud that uh, it's accepted already by so many different them vendors. And this is important as you all have different systems and we want we, we do not want to left anyone out of that. Um, and what is easy, what is cool, we um, we we decided to introduce a starter edition, which is actually for individuals and for um, small groups of, 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 of agencies or companies sharing assets. We've introduced a complete new pricing option for them. Uh, we believe you don't have to buy a whole suite of products if you're only in InDesign or Photoshop or InDesign and PowerPoint. Uh, for individuals and for small teams, we thought it would be a cool idea if you can make a decision on the product and if it would start at a very affordable price. So as you can see with 99 cents, you can start using the CI app connector uh, in different applications um, per month. And we do believe that this is a, that delivers a real cool value um, to individuals. We still have the enterprise edition and the professional edition, which, in, uh, which, which delivers uh, enterprise capabilities, SSO, um, EU cells for hosting the applications to be compliant with all of that. Um, so I do think with the, with the flexibility of that model, we deliver an amazing value to all of the users now, not just to the corporates. Okay, um, I'm actually finished. Um, it would be amazing if there are questions, uh, then we would be really happy to answer them. Uh, I already see some questions. Let me just take a look there. 
So I've uh, got one question. Is there, I can't read it to be honest. Is there the ability to control which repositories the user yeah. has access to? This is a this is a very common enterprise question. So is there the ability to control what kind of connections the user can access? And yes, it is. The system is capable of managing a black and a white list. So you can easily define that someone is capable to access, let's say, a SharePoint and maybe a, a Getty images, but not capable of using a Dropbox. You can completely control that. And within the professional edition, you have the ability um, to set that up and manage that. This is absolutely the way it is. Um, what dumb systems are supported? Um, DRM. DRM systems. What digital rights management are supported? Good question. In the moment, we do have an integration with the Fidel services. Uh, there is a system called Rights Cloud from Fidel. Uh, we have integrated that, and that gives you a very powerful ability to control each asset um, in your in, in your DAM system or in your creative work against the rights you have purchased based on a country, based on a time, and based on a use. And we are working heavily to integrate more of these systems, expect more systems in 2022. And if you have specific systems in mind, send us an email, let us know what you think should would be valuable, and uh, we will get back to you and let you know if this is in the roadmap and if we can access that. Okay. Do you have plans for an XD integration? Yes, we do have an, an, an a, we not just have a plan, um, we already have a version on that. Um, within this year, we will release um, a version for Adobe XD, for Figma, and for Sketch. Uh, this is what we call the design family. So you will see a CI app connector for these products uh, within these years. If you're interested in that, and maybe if you're interested to join the beta program, send me a short email uh, and I will get back to you on an individual level. Happy to do that. Um, so if a customer no already has an internal workflow platform, oh, this is a good question. Um, so yes, um, workflow is something what we've introduced yesterday at the Adobe Max. Um, the CIAP connector can connect to, directly to a workflow system. Uh, the first version we've introduced is the connectivity to Adobe Workfront uh, and to the Sheridian workflow system. So um, you will be able to see your work tasks. You will also automatically see the um, assets assigned to a work task. So imagine you're in InDesign. You click on task, you get your task, you get the attached, um, you get the attached assets, you click on them, you do your retouching work or you do the changes, you upload it again into the workflow system and request the next workflow. It's all built in, it's available across all of the products. It works in the same way in After Effects as it works in InDesign and Premiere Pro. Yes, workflow is part of the product now. Um, is an enterprise in an enterprise how is licensing of Getty handle? Um, actually, the licensing of um, of stock assets is handled in conjunction with the stock image provider. So, if you have a Getty plan, uh, which allows you a certain amount or a, a flat fee or whatever, that's completely respected within the CI app connector. So there is no additional charge, there's no additional effort. If you have an enterprise plan which allows you to select assets from Getty, the same way through the CI app connector. No change there, completely transparent. Um, if a customer already has an internal, okay. I think that's all, ah, yes. Um, uh, with the individual pricing, yes, we can definitely uh, deliver a very competitive pricing for uh, large projects. Uh, and even in an enterprise, you can make a decision that you only license, let's say, the Microsoft PowerPoint connector. 
Um, and that gives you the capability that even 10,000, 20,000 people access pre-approved brand compliant material in a really easy way within your organization. And that's completely security compliant. Uh, the CIOP connector is never storing information in the CIOP server or in the connection. It always stays in your systems, so it's completely uh, compliant with um, actually all of the security assessments we, uh, we've ever seen. So yes, that also works. Good question. Okay, what time is it? We're always a little bit quicker. <laughs> um, I would say, if there is an additional question, I'm really happy to answer that. Um, if not, I'm giving you 15 minutes time to either breathe or spend with your friends and family. So I say thank you. Thanks for joining from, uh, from wherever you are and enjoy the rest of the day. Maybe you have a chance to also join Adobe Max uh, for the last day. There are a couple of really exciting things coming up. Uh, visit our booth there. There are a couple of very nice giveaways. Uh, if you want, just, uh, just take a look there. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm.